today this is a great this is a great uh i don't this is a great day this is a great day for a couple of reasons number one uh new friend co-host christy strauss uh film inquiry and now the brand new uh well uh, something brand new that this interview is going to start christy please hi hi say hi everybody and and then we have today we have something we have great special days to help kick off this this great endeavor which christy will talk about we have matt russell who is a writer director works with stop the killer games we are going to talk to him about the short movie which is actually a promo but i call it a short film to promote the brand new Stop the Killer Halloween 2 game coming out uh, vis-a-vis Kickstarter in December. And we also have CEO and game designer. He's the Milton Bradley of, of horror board games, oh. Anthony Massey. <laughs> <laughs> and I did look him up, actually. <laughs> I did look up Milton Bradley. There's no controversy on him. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll only do this interview if you call me Milton the whole time. Just Milton. Call me Milton. I would love that so much. So, Christy, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you. Tell uh, tell everybody why this is so exciting. What is this the launch of? Yeah. So, um, like we said, recent uh, acquaintances with Dimitri, and we decided that it would be fun to kind of bring something a little bit more to the site film inquiry which i run and and editor in chief of which we do cover all kinds of film and television but uh you know horror has always been something that's very near and dear to my heart um which is why i also run a separate site just for that um but we're we started horror inc which is basically videos and podcasts devoted to that subject and this is just an amazing idea that he had to bring you two on and uh to bring matt and milton on to really discuss (laughs) um (laughs) just an exciting area first of all of of the horror community that maybe doesn't always necessarily get these kind of discussions which personally is what excites me so much about it because there's a huge i mean you know first of all that isn't even a promo that's a short film (laughs) like that's like the most um that's like the longest most extensive promo that i've seen and also you know this whole group of games is just incredible um i mean i feel like you must just wake up and be like wow i do this for a living this is so cool (laughs) but (laughs) yeah yeah, i kind of do i get getting ideas left and right and it's hard to kind of focus on one thing sometimes because it's like oh we can do this oh we can do that game we can do this game so so yeah, uh, but it's been great so far. Uh, this is our fourth game. Halloween Two is our fourth game. I'm sorry, our third game. <laughs> Ghost Space is our fourth game. Well, yeah, and we want to talk, Matt. So you made this short film, and I know, and then you're like, it was a promo for the thing, and you even said that too. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's a, it's a short. Not only is it a short film that promotes Stop the Killer, as a Halloween fan and a Halloween Two fan, I believe it to be canon. You know, I don't know what the Akkad say about this, but I believe this to be canon because you do something that that is actually quite fantastic. And for those who know, they know like you, you, you focus on a character that's briefly mentioned in one scene (laughs) that's not in the movie and you bring that character to life. Um, Please, I want you to please like take us through, walk us through. How did this all come about? And when in your writing process, how did you figure this out in the timeline of Halloween 2, the movie? Well, um, you know, Anthony is one of my best friends. So I actually, you know, had the privilege of witnessing the birth of Stop the Killer Games from the sideline for the first two games. And uh, he told me after My Buddy Valentine came out, he said, guess what? Halloween two is going to be the next one. And so just the opportunist in me immediately jumped up and said, let me do a commercial for it. And he said, I love that idea. So, you know, you got to understand at the the beginning, we thought it was just going to be something that we would shoot on an iPhone at a friend's house with a few people we knew. Um, We didn't know (laughs) it was going to get as big and polished as it ended up being. Um, But it was always important to me that even though, you know, the inclusion of the game would obviously 
break the fourth wall, uh, I knew that I wanted the commercial to be rooted as much in the reality of the movie as possible. Um, so back when we thought we were going to shoot it in a house, which was the original version, um, I said, okay, well, it's got to take place very early on in the movie before he gets to the hospital. And, you know, Anthony and I were talking and we're like, well, we're lucky enough to live in Los Angeles near the original filming locations. What if we included those? And so your first draft is always the most ambitious because you don't have to figure out logistics yet. So the original idea was that we were that Julie, the nurse, and I knew I said, well, if we're going to put a nurse in it, let's make it Julie because she's mentioned in the film. So um, can we just, just just for the uninitiated or for those who don't quite pay that much attention like we do julie is who like julie, how does she fit in right so there's a scene in the film early on where janet the candy striper is talking to bud the paramedic and janet is relaying a story she was supposedly told by this unseen character named julie who claims that she saw michael myers walking in a field behind the lost river drive-in uh and so Bud immediately pokes a hole in her story, you know, <laughs> saying she's full of shit because he didn't escape till last night. And she was claiming she saw him the day before. So I said, all right, I want to include I want to include a character that we hear about but never see. So we need a nurse because it has to be connected to the hospital from Halloween, too. So it'll be a nurse walking home. And mind you, this is not the version we ended up shooting this was just my original thought process with the very first draft so i said okay it's a nurse walking home and it's julie um you know those who get it will get it so, so dimitri i made it for you <laughs> you <laughs> thank you nobody um, ever made anything for me before <laughs> <laughs> um and so uh the character grew when i eventually got to the version that you saw you know um you know, when, uh, so with this particular version, you know, just to walk you through the premise, it would be her walking home from work on Halloween night, 1978. So the idea was, okay, she's going to walk past the Doyle house. And when she gets to the end of the block, she's going to hear what she thinks are firecrackers. Obviously they're Dr. Loomis's gunshots. She was going to keep walking. She was going to pass the alley from Halloween two and not notice a silhouette in the distance. She was going to walk past the front of the Elrod house and hear the scream and think it was a, think it was a prank. And then she was going to arrive home where her teenage daughter and her friends were going to tell her, we just heard on the radio that three people were killed down on Orange Grove. We're so happy you got home. Okay. Eventually Michael would break into their house and they'd have to play the game to vanquish him. Um, and so that was the original concept. And that was actually the script that Universal approved. Uh, initially and I think uh, it was the day we got that script approved we had to submit it a few times they pushed back on a couple of initial uh, ideas but the day we finally got approval I turned to Anthony and I had this realization I was like it's Halloween too we have to have it in a hospital <laughs> so I told him I said hey we got to do this I got to start from scratch and the very experienced and supportive producer that he is, you know, he looked at me and he said, what are you nuts? Like, we already got approval. We can't go back. <laughs> like, we have to go with what we want. And I said, just let me write it. So I wrote the, you know, a closer, I wrote the version that, that you saw. It was still a little different. Um, and he said, okay, I think this is just as good, but I like it. Let's see if we can get them to approve it. And they did. Um, and, you know, I'll always be grateful to Anthony my whole life, not only for letting me do this in the first place, but he always said yes <laughs> throughout the entire process. No, I didn't. I in, said in no. Every... I said no all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was right. hard to say no because Matt had such a enthusiasm. And, <clears throat> you know, when you're producing, you want to uplift your writer and your director. You want to give them the freedom and support them. And, you know, who am I to say no? You know what I mean? Like, let's just do this. Let's make it great. It's going to be amazing. So. So I'm eternally grateful to Matt as well, because I don't honestly, I mean, I think, you know, I could have had a lot of people create a trailer, but not as good as Matt. Matt is the quintessential horror 
Halloween fan and knows every little thing. And because Matt and I, Matt, is, tell me if I'm wrong. We've been talking for years about doing something together. I mean, oh, yeah. forever. It's like, let's do this. Let's do that. And Matt's really good at calling me and saying, all right, I have a great idea. It's a three season television anthology. <laughs> and this season's going to connect to that. And it's like, okay, I'll get right on that. But, you know, a, a trailer for a board game felt like, okay, I can do that. Let's do that. So it kind of just was the right thing to do after all these years, especially both of us being such Halloween fanatics, you know. That's <clears> awesome. <throat> That's how we became friends, you know, because yeah. I used to work for his website back in the day. So, right. Uh, it was pretty perfect. <laughs> It was. Oh, and by the way, um, we did go to the Elrod Alley in Pasadena. So those who who are watching who don't know, um, Halloween was filmed in South Pasadena and also with Halloween too. Some of the locations are right there behind the Myers house. So we went to the alley like, at, I don't know, 10 or 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday or something, <laughs> thinking like we there's no way we, were get, way we were getting a permit or anything like that. It was just like we we're just going to drop in, get our shot and go. And there was a cop there. There was like a car there just sitting there the whole night. And we we're like, we were walk, walking around and we're going like, is this guy here just tonight or whatever? And the alley looked a little different. If you look at the movie Halloween 2, there's an X. <clears throat> it's like a big white X on the telephone pole. And that's always sure. there. And for some reason, it wasn't there. So they removed this X. And there was a big van or something, right, Matt? Like there was a big car kind of It was a big there. SUV. The cars weren't, the cars were too modern you know yeah and, and also to be clear we didn't show up with our crew and you know and our michael Myers. oh it was just us it was yeah. just him and me <laughs> location scouting basically with our yeah. with our phone and he was he was kind of paranoid he's like what what like <laughs> well, i didn't want to get like arrested <laughs> wearing a halloween shirt taking a picture of an alley <laughs> you know i don't think that i don't think we're the first ones to do this right <laughs> oh my god so i got this idea i thought you know what well the second are... ones to do it aren't with us anymore Right. So. <laughs> so i thought they were there all the time so i said to matt i was like i'm gonna go tomorrow night and the next night so like every night for like three three nights or whatever i went i drove to pasadena i live in north hollywood so i'm not i'm like 20 minutes and Jeez. just to see if there was a cop there and there was like the first night and whatever and i just thought maybe they during this season because this took this was last october wasn't it Matt, September, oh, October? Yeah, September, I think. So yeah. it was around Halloween. So I thought maybe the town oh, does okay. this. They hire somebody to sort of sit there to watch, you know, because these homes get disturbed by all sure. these fans showing up. Um, but then the idea changed to film at a hospital location. So we just kind of abandoned that whole thing. So, so the mystery of what was happening with the cop? was like never like never unraveled <laughs> you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna drive there tonight and i'll report back to you i was thinking there was, was gonna be cop. this like huge story ending to that <laughs> oh i know i know i think it was deputy hunt <laughs> deputy <laughs> hunt neighborhood <laughs> you know that is so funny um so okay so you so you switch locations your first idea sounds great by the way is yeah um okay. And then you move to a hospital. So then where, so then what are the logis the logistics? You didn't film well, we in had to a find hospital. A, we had to find a, a, a hospital-like location <laughs> um, to shoot in. And I think Matt even said, let's find the original hospital. I mean, had to have been shot somewhere. I mean, it's a veteran's hospital in Van Nuys, which was the it exterior, is. but there was an interior. Um, so we naturally, right? We tried to do that. We tried to find we the look into that. Yeah, um, we look. We looked at various locations. Some were actual hospital locations, right. and there was one time where it was so expensive, but it looked right. to me like you got the whole facility. So I was like, "What if we reach out to all of our filmmaker friends and say, hey, do you have a, something you want to film in a hospital? We'll all <laughs> kick in, and you guys film in that wing, and we'll film in this wing.' <laughs> you know, right. we didn't get that far. No. Uh, luckily, we found Envision Eight Studios in Burbank, uh, which is a bunch of standing sets so they had the hospital room the corridor you know they also have jail cells and a morgue and courtroom a bar you know it's a pretty neat location um and so we we scouted that place and i was like okay i think i can make this work and That's great luckily was a you know i also um <clears throat> took a tape measure and i literally measured the dimensions of the room and the bed 
and everything, uh, the doorways, the distance from the door to the bed and everything, and then taped a mock-up of the room in an empty office where I work. Uh, so we had a full cast rehearsal where we could block the scene because we only had 12 hours at the location on the day. Right. And three hours of that go to set up, break down and lunch. <laughs> so we had to hit the ground running. Um, but that was the great benefit that we had to being able to think this through over, you know, quite a while. That's awesome. Yeah. Christy, what do you, what do you have? <laughs> um, what do I have? Yeah, no, I was just, yeah. um, it's, it's interesting in the process of that. So how, how long did it take you overall to make that short film? Like the, from, you know, initial um, idea to. I mean, we were thinking about it for a while and then, uh, Tony, when did you have the signing at Dark Delicacies for the My Bloody Valentine game and book? That was that was February, right? Yes, it was February. So it was of 2022. Of 2023. Are we talking? 2023. Wow. Yeah, okay. this year. Um, <clears throat> so we had been thinking about it since the previous fall. And <laughs> then it was literally at the book signing at Dark Delicacies where I was just hanging out to support him when <laughs> you know, I was convinced. I said, that's when it hit my, that's when it dawned on me. I'm like, we have to put this in a hospital. And so he and I went to dinner afterwards and had a discussion <laughs> about <laughs> changing it. Um, so it was February where it was February where we decided, okay, we want to pivot and do this in the hospital. And then we shot it April 3rd, I think. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And we had to do it very quickly. I mean, it took a lot of planning, but you know, you don't just shoot it and edit it and you're done in a week. I mean, we knew it was going to take a lot of editing, you know, I mean, you don't just, it takes a long time. Post takes a really long time yeah. for any project and we had to score oh, yeah. it and we didn't want to just use, you know, copyright free. We wanted, we wanted to score it from first frame to last. Um, and all of that. And then we had to get it approved. So the biggest concern that I had as a producer was getting Universal to approve it. So, um, cause they, they just take forever. I mean, you know, when you're doing licensing, you know, sometimes your licensor is right there at the ready to approve quickly, but Universal just had a very long approval process, which is fine, but I didn't want us to, you know, to have to delay the Kickstarter because the trailer wasn't approved. So we tried to shoot it as early as possible, but also give us enough time to cast it and do everything that we needed to do. I mean, we bought the phone, like we bought all the props in it. I mean, the phone, the crate paper the on the wall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, everything was like, there was a lot of prep for this. Um, the costume, and the little brooch that she's wearing, the little hat, <laughs> like all these things had, you know, had to be, had to match the movie. And so that took right. a long time to source all that stuff. And the label on the phone you can't see it, but it says Haddonfield Memorial Hospital, room 1031. Right. That's how oh, much detail we went hysterical. into. Yeah. We just wanted it to, I mean, we. Did, I didn't even I think mean, anybody would see that, but <laughs> it puts you in like the actors in the frame of mind. And, you know, we wanted right. it to look like a deleted scene. Like these were the That's first awesome. people Michael attacks when he gets to Haddonfield Memorial mm -hmm. Hospital. You know, before he moves on, it's like you could slot it in to different places in the movie. And that is what we hoped would be something that the fans would notice. And if you didn't notice, it made perfect sense. Like you didn't have to know that was Julie. You know what I mean? Right. Like it's just the fact that you noticed it and, you know, Halloween 2 fanatics noticed it, it was just a huge plus. So so that that was the aim for it all. Yeah, it's like one of those uh, if you know, you know sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's super yeah. cool. Yeah. I like the attention. And even like a dialogue, she says something like in the movie when this character Janet is saying, My friend Julie saw him walking behind the Lost River Drive in, she says, Julie said he was so creepy. So Matt wrote this line that's because she's challenged. So Dorothy, who's in the bed, says, Did you really see Michael Myers? And then they say, Well, he didn't escape until last night. And she goes, Well, I saw some creep walking behind the drive in, you know, and it's <laughs> right. like the callback. So it really does we try to create Matt try to create the presence of Julie. And now we hope that that's the face you'll see when she says it, you know, when you right. watch Halloween too, you know, when I did watch Halloween too, uh, recently, that was the, I said, Oh, Oh, cool. Oh, she has, <laughs> oh and she has a Ranieri. So Italian. 
<laughs> She's Italian? There you go. Hey, Dimitri, you would have gotten that trivia question right on a show we did. That was the tough <laughs> question. Was what was That was Julie? the question. Right. What's uh, that? <laughs> that is actually my lovely wife's uh, maiden name. So, really? That's yeah. awesome. That is so cool. Um, and then you cleverly interweave the game because ultimately this is about the stop the killer game. How is that process? I mean, it was great. That wasn't easy. That wasn't because there was a narration, Matt. Remember, we wrote a whole narration. <laughs> oh, did right. you? Well, the yeah, so the commercial was always kind of perceived to be eventually cut down to like a traditional 60 second commercial and then okay so he'll be the extended version and then here will be the 60 second version and we just sort of abandoned that idea eventually because we were like you know it, this is kind of working at seven minutes and uh, you know we would probably compromise how well it works if we did the 60 second cut down um but there was there was vo you know written that was going to kick in uh in that final you know battle and so it was you know he's here who and then it was going to go over the shot of michael's shadow passing the window and it was going to be you know michael myers is on the loose and it's <laughs> up to you to stop him introducing stop the killer you know it's going to be all you know like a traditional like board game right commercial, right you know, you know um time is running out <laughs> exactly, exactly. exactly. Right. you know and then we actually shot um, Jaylee, who played Julie, asked us after she was like, where was that shot? It was so cool because she remembered us filming it where uh, one of the last shots of the piece, which is the face off shot between okay. and Dorothy when they're about yeah. to class. That shot is actually was designed that the camera would then pedestal down and the, the uh, box of the game was standing upright and it was going to block them as they clashed so you wouldn't see the outcome and that was going to be the product shot that said halloween to the game at stop you know buy it at stopthekiller.com um but we just you know we were editing one night and uh by the way anthony edited the commercial himself uh we actually had two editors fall out um at the last minute so he took it over <laughs> and did an incredible job um, but one day he's just like, hey, let's try it once without without the box. And I said, all right. And we're like, you know, the whole thing feels like a movie. Let's not mm -hmm. end it like a commercial. And yeah, when it, when it, when the when it panned down and you saw the box, it just didn't quite feel like the ending. It needed. It right. right. was like, well, where's this? I and mean, we've seen the game in it already, but it had played so well up to that. It just felt better to cut out. And the pedestal just wasn't working. The shot just wasn't working as well as we thought. Right. Yeah, because we were shooting so fast, we never quite got a perfect take of it. Um, and then as far as the BO went, I did a scratch track and he cut it into the spaces that I thought it would be. In the very first line, I was like, get rid of it. Take it out. <laughs> it ruins it. <laughs> it did. It took all the, it interrupted the fun is what it did. It was like, yeah. oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. There was no need for it. It was like it was more fun to watch it than to than to hear someone try to feel like a like a throwback. It was like you know we were and you yeah. wrote it like a throwback too. Like you would this is what the commercial that you would have heard in eighty one, but it just it was just fighting with the visual. It really was. Right. Right. Yeah, Robert McKee would have been proud that we didn't put it in. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, casting. How long did the process take? How did you pick the people that eventually landed the leads? We ran an ad in backstage, like we a real casting. You know, wow. it was like we need the right people. I mean, because Matt and I talk all the time about horror movies, and the thing we agree on is that you, you know, you've got to have the right actors in your horror movie. You know, you have they have to sell what's going on. So bad acting is like the worst. It's like the worst thing. You have the best special effects, the best script, the best directing, but if your actors aren't like really selling it you know then it's just not it's not worth it so i was like well let's just you know instead of calling our friends and saying hey are you available <laughs> you know like um and so we we uh we matt wrote up the little actor synopses and i went in and posted an ad and people responded a lot of people responded right. so it was all done on zoom all right, done on zoom wow we okay. had about 700 700 responses 700 wow. 
Yeah. And you whittled it, it down to, wow. Well, you picked I personally, three. personally you, whittled it down. And then uh, we wound <laughs> up with, so eventually, so actually, first of all, originally the character of Dorothy in the bed was supposed to be Gwen's mom. It was supposed to be a middle-aged oh. woman. Oh, okay. She's like a 55 year old. Yeah. Right. And we couldn't, uh, you know, we put out that casting call and none of the responses, they just didn't fit the role. And I said, right. I started to get worried. We were about two weeks out from shooting and we couldn't cast, we couldn't cast Glenn until we cast Dorothy. Right. You know? And then we didn't want to cast Julie until we had them as well. You know, so we knew the whole dynamic. Dor Dorothy right. was who we had to cast around. Right. And there were two, uh, two invaluable suggestions that Anthony made during the casting process. And the first one was, he said, well, when we had hit that wall on casting the mother was, what if it's Glenn's sister? And it dawned on me, like, why didn't I think of that in the first place? Because it created that duality between Michael and Lori. So now it's right. a brother and sister that love each other, <laughs> you know, the, the right. opposite of Michael and Lori. So that was brilliant. And we already had, you know, 300, 400 <laughs> people applying for Julie. So I right. took all those uh, admissions and whittled it down to say, okay, who would, who would, uh, who would be a good Dorothy? And so we set up a few auditions and the very first person to audition for the role of Dorothy was Jaylee Hoyt, who wound up playing Julie. Julie. And she was amazing. And then right after her was Jesse Gallagher, who played Oh well, wait, she was uh, Jaylee auditioned for Dorothy. Right. 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 Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Thanks yeah. to Julie. Sorry, my mistake. Yeah. So she had, she auditioned for Dorothy. Right. The best part of her audition was, you know, we were having her act out the scene where she's fighting Michael, and she bent down out of frame and she stood up with a real hammer <laughs> and right. charged at the camera. So you know, uh, that was really fun. Um, and so I said, all right she's amazing we we definitely have someone you know i think and then uh jesse gallagher showed up next and she was equally amazing and so it was it was funny because within a half an hour you start out the audition process just right. praying that you find somebody decent enough right. to hire so you can just move further on in the process and then within a half hour it just became you're pulling your hair out over this torturous decision of wait a minute did both of them have to be brilliant now i can't now i can't choose right um and so the second great uh suggestion that anthony made was just cast them both make one of them julie nice <laughs> you know well and, they were both really they were good done. oh they were they're, both yeah they're both yeah. really good um so we want to talk about the game because they are actually playing the game in the the promo but before it too i wanted to talk about uh, a couple of things something that people always love especially in halloween movies and whatnot easter eggs there was some easter eggs in this movie uh what can you share for people about like when they watch this and then they become inspired to buy the game easter eggs related to the game or to the movie to the movie oh. or to both but to the movie mm -hmm. Um, Bud's jacket there's a jacket in there <laughs> yeah so if you watch uh, so the shot of, of julie standing in the hallway you'll see uh -huh. jacket on a wheelchair um you'll see the same black and orange streamer decorations that are in the hallway uh we tried see. to match those as good as possible. And again, oh. we were trying to make it very clear that this was like another wing right. like another hallway in, in the most house. in the most quiet um less busy like the least busiest hospital in the country exactly it wasn't busy there. i had actually suggested i said i even said to man i'm like let's have people walking by he's like no it's got to be look like halloween too it's right. got to look it's like got a like, come on come on <laughs> another quick another quick story about the development process is your people, people don't realize that there is a patient there is at least one patient in haddonfield memorial hospital that we never see Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's when uh it's when Lori's having her reaction to the medication right jill is standing by her doorway and a buzzer goes off yep. and she has to go tend to that patient while michael sneaks into Lori's room and stabs the pillows so 
<clears throat> I was like, well, who's that other, who's yeah. that other patient? Right. Um, and so originally when I was thinking of the hospital thing, I was like, oh, it's gotta be that patient. And I said, well, that patient's got to be the mother of the two babies in the maternity ward that. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I was originally writing that. And then uh, and Glenn was going to be the father who was going to look at the babies in the maternity ward. You know, I said, ah, I don't want to kill a newborn, you know, mm -hmm. a newborn dad. Yeah, so that's, right. that's too depressing. So there's somebody else <laughs> elsewhere in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, but that's uh cool um notice the Haddonfield hat from fright rags right we actually saw a fan wearing that at that book signing and i was like where'd you get that hat and he goes it's fright rags i was like we got to get that hat from fright Rags." <laughs> um so they sent us the hat which is actually the one thing i kept from the shoot nice <laughs> you wear <Yeah>. it well <laughs> um we have been the pillow as, okay as uh Dorothy falls out of bed. Um, we have him tipping, we have him tilting his head the way that he yep. tilts his head at at uh, Janet. Mm -hmm. uh, a quick story uh, idea is in there is that uh, well, why isn't Julie? You know, we hear Julie mentioned. Why isn't Julie there? She must have been there because she was able to tell them about Michael Myers. Right. Oh, Karen relieved her, so it's right. actually Karen who was relieving her for their shift. I mean, she was late. That don't make sense. Right. <laughs> um, now, something else I noticed mm -hmm. uh, in Halloween 2, I guess it's really not good to have your name start with J. Because <laughs> you've got Julie, you've got Jimmy. Jill, you've got Jimmy, <laughs> Janet, <laughs> Janet, Bailey, right? Yeah, so. Well, not, even like, in the first one, oh. you got Lori, Lester, Linda, uh, Lee, <laughs> Brackett. Yeah. You know, there's it's a number crazy. of Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> so, Loomis. um, Loomis, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Loomis. <laughs> um, and then one, one, so one other thing I noticed in the thank yous. Um, okay, for so first, you you thank Dan and Melissa Russell. I don't want to assume, but your parents or brother or sister, like, uh, no, Dan, I don't want to make the relation. assumption. Dan is no relation, he's a friend of mine. Oh, okay. Uh, and gotcha. wife. Okay. And yeah. you also have Fred Decker mentioned in yes. the thank yous. Now, was that just to say thank you, or did he have any input to the movie, to this short? Yeah. Uh, he's he's a good friend of mine and, uh, and a mentor of mine. So uh, I had him read the script, and he actually gave one note on a piece of dialogue that he didn't quite understand and i was like yeah you're right it doesn't it doesn't quite work he was you know he was asking uh is that fan service because if it is i don't get it and it's distracting you know and i was like yeah you're right it's not that clear so i you know i uh revised that and he also watched the version of it and gave me his feedback so <clears throat> that's great so um now i can say Christy is of the initiated. I've talked to her about this game, about the games. So I know she has a question regarding the games. We'll, we'll yes. talk about the game. Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's talk games. <laughs> let's talk games. <laughs> well, I'd really love, you know, I think our listeners um, and readers would love to really know more about kind of the beginning of these games in general. Mm -hmm. And then more specifically, you know, the the most recent one that is coming out um, and just how you got involved and, and where this was born. Sure. I'll try to be succinct. It's a long story. But <laughs> um, I was working with the producers of an old 1984 movie called Silent Night, Deadly Night. And I am currently producing the remake of that film. And so we were looking at things to license, you know, they got, they have the title. So it was like, let's license it. That's what you do. Right. Everyone's got a Michael Myers mug and, you know, like, look at Matt with his cup, you know, like, like, what could they put Silent Night, Deadly Night on? And um, the subject of a board game came up. And so, but a, on a long list of like wrapping paper, ornaments, you know, stockings, right. snow globes, all that stuff. So I just kind of went off on my own um, to just design something. And I'm a professional magician. And uh, so I'm used to designing sort of puzzles that are passed off as experiences, right? It's like designing something that creates a moment of like wonder. And so this was right up my alley. And so I just in my own spare time designed a game. 
And I did this. I also studied game design. Uh, there's a lot of people on YouTube that can tell you how to design board games and all that. So I just sub I, I immersed myself in design and I was, I have books, I have six or seven books on game design and did everything that I could to design a game that I thought would be engaging around the premise of this killer Santa um, sort of going to the orphanage. I don't know if you've seen the movie, but he goes back to this orphanage after he goes on a killing spree to go kill this, this head nun that, that like lives there. Um, and so I designed this, this game where he starts on one side of the board and the orphanage is on the other and he's moving his way around the board and all the other players are trying to just stop him from doing that. So it's a bit of a cooperative game where you, you know, you, you operate by yourself, but anyone that stops Billy from getting from the toy store to the orphanage, you know, if anyone stops him, they all kind of win. So after a while, uh, I developed this game. I brought a test version of it to the uh, to lunch. We, we met for coffee with the licensors of this horror movie and we played the game and they loved it. And they said, oh my God, you actually designed this? I'm like, I, I, obs I, didn't obs I obsessed over it. And so <laughs> we sort of called Fright Rags because they had a deal with Fright Rags, uh, which is a great merchandiser in the horror space. And they did all the artwork for it and we did a Kickstarter. And um it went over really well. It's very successful, more successful than we thought it was. It should have been or could have been. And then after the success of that, we moved on and thought, let's just do another one. So we got a hold of My Bloody Valentine, which is a you know another favorite of mine. And we replicated the same game. We said because you know if you look at eighties horror movies, there's usually the same kind of tropes. You know, there's usually a killer that's very <laughs> identifiable, trying to get from one place to go to another. There's usually a sheriff. Um, you know, uh, and there's just this built in sort of tropes. And so we were able to do that with My Bloody Valentine. And then we did Halloween 2. Um, and that's shipping in December. And now we're currently right now, the Kickstarter for Ghostface is running for another week. It ends on Halloween. Um, and so it's a series. There's four games called Stop the Killer. And if you buy any game, you can play the previous game. So if you buy Halloween 3 and you buy you know, Silent Night, Deadly Night later, Halloween you can play two. Silent Night. Because Halloween, two. Kinda... Halloween 2. Halloween oh, 2. Or did I say Halloween 3? Yeah. Yeah. Slip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said nothing about Halloween 3. Um... <laughs> we'll fix it in post. <laughs> right. We'll... Right. <laughs> that pro uh, that commercial is going to be awesome if I get to do that one. Yeah, Matt has a really good idea for a Halloween three commercial. Well, if you need casting, sure. um... <laughs> where do you oh, live, Christy? Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's kind of how it happened, and um, and along the way, you know, it's like you know, right now I'm working on I can't mention it yet, but we're working on another title that I'm really excited about. Um, we just, uh, I don't know if you guys know who the, uh, it's an organization called the Horror Writers Association. Um, and they, they're the ones that do the Bram Stoker Awards every year. They do Stoker Con. Um, so if you see a, a horror novel with a Bram Stoker Award winner, you know, they've been around for 35 years. Uh, Dean Koontz started it. With, I think, I think they've been at Midsummer Scream. I'm I've sure seen them at, have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They have, they're oh. a very, they're a very prestigious literary organization for horror and dark fantasy writers. Um, and so they contacted us and said, Hey, we'd love to have a game. So I'm designing a game for them called sudden acts of horror, which is a charades game. Um, <laughs> and so it's just really, you know, we're just off and running. We're designing all kinds of games, you know, for silent night, deadly night, we have this, this is the first time I'm actually showing it, but it's a card game. Um, it's, it's called, it's called the hex deck. We have a series, um, and you know, it's got all, it's got grandpa and the nurse and the nun and can't really, it's, my camera's a little fuzzy, but yeah, but it's like, we have these solitaire games coming out. So the juices are flowing, the ideas are flowing, the opportunities are coming and we're just designing games and we love it. And so yeah. the traditional stop the killer gameplay method is ending with ghost face. And now we're going to be releasing new games that start that play differently. And our, some are complicated, some are easy, some are solitaire, some are party games, things like that. So I hope that summarizes like it, how, where, we, how, where we came from and where we're going. It definitely did. And it also made me have like 10 other questions that I wanted to ask you. Just to reverse really <laughs> quick. So you said you're a magician. Mm -hmm. You did. Okay. You did go fast, but you did say you're a magician. That's so yes. cool. Um, did you say that you create puzzles? What was the bit that you said you create like 
Well, I'm talking like a magician. So when you design a magic trick, I was talking about designing magic tricks. So like, yeah. to me, it's kind of like, well, how do you make a pencil levitate? You know, to me, mm -hmm. in my mind, it's like a puzzle. Like, like, how you. do we make this happen? But to the audience, it's a it's an experience. So you it, throughout your the, like the method, you have to hide the method. It has to be deceptive. But then you have to perform it in a way that people believe it for them. I mean, no, you don't believe that a pencil can really float. But if you're looking at it floating, you know, you're like, you know, so I'm, it's that moment of wonder where everybody's focused on one thing. And so I took that sensibility into into board game. Like I don't like games where. Typically you add up the amount of, you add up your total points and you're like, oh, I have more points than you. I win. You know, that doesn't feel magical to me. What does feel magical is, oh my God, Matt's playing the, like a four of us are playing a game and Matt's battling Michael Myers and we're all sitting there and he flicks the spinner and it's like, yay, he won. You know, like that's me, <laughs> that's a moment. And so I think what I'm doing as a designer is trying to create moments, you know, um, and I've test played the game many times and, you know, when somebody dies, it's like, oh, they just killed John. Oh my God. You know, like, <laughs> you know it's just, it, it's that it's kind devastating. of devastating. It's that, yeah. Well, it, I mean, we're all having fun, especially if you're drinking. There's a drinking version to all the games, too. It makes it so much more it, fun. It, but. It, well, but to your point, when I introduced my Bloody Valentine to some of my friends out heroes, um, right. that's exactly how it was. It's like yes. a character would die, but it's like, oh, well, you guys are still going on and the the dead person was like oh you gotta get them like and they're dead <laughs> they're not even playing but yet they're invested. and they're dead right? and they're dead and they're still invested in the yeah. game and i thought that that was fantastic <laughs> and i can tell you that um yeah getting ghost face really looking forward to that yeah. uh i have one going to christy as well along with the oh, hex nice. deck i don't know what the heck that means but I figured. So hey, I'll tell you what it is. Like the hex deck. Yeah, what's so, a hex deck? I'm sorry. I know it's, it's a it's, deck it's, of hex. It's, exactly. So they're hexagon hex shaped. So like that. this is the ghost face one. So yeah, hexagon shaped, and the <laughs> the in the word deck d e hex decks h e x d three x. It's three. It's basically three sim three symbols on every hexagon shaped card. So you're okay. it's, it's an edge matching game, and so you're trying to match edges as you're building rings around this center card and if you can uh, complete your solitaire build your card game your layout if you can complete that before all of the ghost face cards show up you win um and i could i, I already we're doing one for happy birthday to me which i'm oh, really nice. excited about because um you play it by yourself on your birthday right because it's happy birthday nice. to me. so you play it's a <laughs> game you play on your birthday so just tuck it away and every year just take it out and play it and um you know I it's one it. of these things where like you i want people like, like every year to play silent night deadly night i want you every friday no, friday the 13th but every my bloody valentine's you know i want you to play that on valentine's day and ghost face is your summer game we placed it you know we we in the movie scream there's really no holiday like it's around halloween but we wanted to make this a ghost face game to celebrate all of the line of masks that ghost face, you know, um, that fun world puts out. And so we created it. It's a drive in theater in the dead of summer. So it's your July 4th game, your Memorial Day, Labor Day, whatever. It's your summer game. So you may get a commercial for that. You may get a, a, Matt a and I, Matt, tell them we talked about it. <laughs> uh, the, after Halloween two was done. Anthony you said, said I quit. No, 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 no! Yeah. I was ready to go. <clears throat> you said you're fired. No, <laughs> um, no he said uh, he goes. The next one has to be even better, but cheaper. <laughs> and I said, I got it. Okay. And then uh, I think exactly like the next it. day, he goes. I decided I want the next one to take place in a drive-in. I'm like, you said you wanted it to be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> i'm like you realize like we don't just need to find a drive-in we need to and i, I think i said to him that's not my problem that's your problem <laughs> yeah. um, spoken like a producer <laughs> yeah uh so uh i did start writing wow. it and it was pretty you know it would have been cool but unfortunately just the schedules of the year it was really the schedule it really wasn't it was the schedule it was just way too much work i mean if when you watch the video, you you know the Halloween two trailer, you know I think as you watch anything, you're like, well, how much could it have, you know cost and whatever. No, it took months and months and months to schedule, cast, 
set up. And then pre-production was ridiculous. And then we had 12 hours to to bang right. it out. And then you go into your month and a half of editing for of seven course. minutes. So yeah. Yeah. But it looked great. It really did. Thank you. Uh, That's it was very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it looked great. It was it's very impressive. Um, loved it. You know, I watched it a couple of times. And not just for preparation here, um, just because it, it was actually really good. And I actually watched it after I watched Halloween too. Mm. Um, so you know, it's it's really good. And and when I met you fine folks at at um Midsummer Scream, I had heard about the games, hadn't played the games. Uh, and then when I finally got to play my Belletti Valentine, it's just so fun. But I talked about this. It's so easy to play that yeah. that a simpleton like me could understand it. And if I could play one game, I'll be able to play right. another game and it'll be a nice segue. I'm so, so glad you're saying that. I just wanted to say like, you know, like there's a lot of really complicated games. I have the Shining game. Okay. Um, I just uh, I just bought the Halloween game. It arrived today. Like so Trick or Treat Studios. It's huge. It's this huge, huge box. Um I'll be right over. All right. So, yeah, we're gonna play it, man, for sure, for sure. Uh and I have no problem. Like I love the fact that horror board games, but the the thing was released uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, tremendous response. I know people that have these games. I have yet to find someone who's played the games because they're very complicated. So I understand that there's a market like board games are bigger now than they've ever been. By 2028, it's supposed to be this multi, 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 multi billion dollar industry. Really? And so, right. But what I wanted to do is like create a game. You could play My Bloody Valentine by yourself if you wanted to. You know, think I about have. four people playing. Oh, cool. And all uh -oh. three people die, one person's left. So I was like, oh, this is a one to four player kind of game. Um, but I wanted them to be easy because another key component is you're playing them on holidays. So the last thing you want to do on My Bloody Valentine is read an hour of instructions. You know, you want to be able to just set it up and be playing in five to 10 minutes and then you're done in 10, 15 minutes and then you can play another, you can play two or three rounds. Right. You know, that's was the goal. So I designed them to feel retro as though they came out in the eighties. So like, like if 1981, if in 1981, my bloody Valentine was released, my mom would have bought that game for me. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I would have had that sitting next to the by Bionic Man figure. You know what I mean? So I wanted that kind of thing. And so did Fright Rags. They loved right. that whole sensibility of it. So. And, and also speaking of my bloody Valentine, that is a Easter egg in the commercial as well. I, I saw it. Yeah. Oh, the book. Oh, stand. okay. Mm. Nice. It was on the nightstand. Uh, yeah, to the, the radio. Oh, nice. hey, there you go. <laughs> and yeah, we we release books too. And Armando Munoz, who writes them, he just did uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Um, I, I I'm sorry, I can't. I, I have to plug the book for ten seconds. That book is insane. If you buy the Silent Night, Deadly Night book, I promise you, your jaw will drop. You're gonna close the book and be like, I can't <laughs> believe he actually got away with writing this shit. I mean, did you think the movie was shocking? This is, this is, I'm so excited. I just got like a chill in my heart. I can't wait for people to read this book. So, so, so tell us what this book is. is. Is it like a book based on the Yeah. Movie? So basically what, I, so you've heard of tie-in novels for, you know, yeah. horror movies and whatever. Not so what we did 40 years, something years later was uh, we wrote a tie-in novel to my bloody Valentine, but it's not just a scene for scene. I mean, it does tell the story of the movie. Absolutely. But I don't know if you're familiar with how George Mahalka's original um, My Bloody Valentine was sort of butchered by the MPAA. I mean, like he took out scenes and footage. And yeah. so this tells that or the original script, Armando, the author, had a script that George provided to him. And so we told the original story. Armando added characters and subplots and did this incredible thing. Well, then we did it for Silent Night, Deadly Night, and it took a lot of tooth pulling with the licensor to let him get away with, you know, what he wanted to express. Um, because uh, if you're familiar with the movie, like Silent Night, Deadly Night really doesn't have a sense of place. You know, once Billy kind of has his, you know, massacre in the toy store and breaks out the front door, you, you don't really kind of know where he is and this history of the town. Armando told this entire incredible story there's new characters new scenes and all of that so there are these epic novelizations that are our tie-ins um they do tell the story the movie of uh, the story of the movie but so much more 
so much more. And we have another one. Uh, we're going to be doing um, Happy Birthday to Me next, which is why we're doing the Hex deck with it. If you buy the book, you get the game with it. Nice. Um, but yeah, so he's, he's, if you go to Armando's place and look at his shelf, he's got every tie in you could, like, not everyone, but so I, visiting hours. Like, I didn't even know there was a, you know, visiting a, hours. I, oh my God. I love it. <laughs> oh I love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he was the right person to do this. And he's in a fantastic writer, but has an edge and a love for slasher, slasher mm-hmm. films that I've never seen in anybody. So he's just cranking out these incredible and we're we're lucky to be working with him. But that's what so, you know, we're a game company, but we're doing books, too, for now. So if it's just cool, we want to do it. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And just out of curiosity, so was you know, Anthony, was this something that you always wanted to do? Like, was there a dream to make games and, and stuff? Or was this just like, well, a- I'm going to tell you two things. I was reminded recently that when I was eight or nine, I invented a game. It was a, it really wasn't a game. It was a toy that I invented. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what it was. I don't think, I ever, I think I've ever, it was basically a balloon that had sand in it. Okay. That's what it was. <laughs> and it was this like long, like long balloon. And I convinced my mother, I said, this is this, I want, I want like Milton Bradley or whatever, our Parker brothers to release this. And my mother actually wrote a letter. It was just a balloon with sand in it. I swear to you. And she wrote a letter and said, my son has a great idea for this product. And uh, they wrote back, they wrote back and said, we're really, you know, she didn't even tell them what it was. She just said, can we, can we come in? Can we talk to you or whatever? And they said, well, we have a team of developers. Thank you anyway. Um, and I forgot about that. But about six or seven years ago, I auditioned for um, Shark Tank because I had a children's game that I created. With the balloon and with it's been in my closet. It was, what was that? And you used the balloon with sand in it? No, I don't. In- <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> the stand, I remember like molding, I was shaping it. I had this vision that I would, uh, that was an eight year old, oh, but I created this really fun, magical, I created a magical experience for like young kids who, you know, believe in Santa and all of that. And I created this, this game and I went and auditioned and everything. I stood in that long line at 4 a.m. or whatever. And I went up and I auditioned and I didn't get on the show, but I look back and I've been designing sort of experiences you know like games in my head just here and there so I think this was no so when I was I didn't have an ambition to be a designer I think people nowadays see that as a real career path because games are back you know like Mm. you know but but no I've always wanted to do magic and produce and be creative in other ways but I think I just went back it's kind of been in my blood a little bit let's put it that way so (laughs) Yeah. Oh, no, dude, you said, um, no, I was just going to say, well, no, number one, thank you. It's been such a, it's been, it, it was since the day that, that we met, it's been fantastic and getting more, seeing more about this world, seeing how you directed. I mean, to me, it's just incredible that you would make a seven minute short movie and not just have it be a commercial but to have it be something that's connected to Halloween to the movie, just like the game is, which by the way is can't wait for that. Um, I, I think that that was really, it goes to show the dedication to the product and the product just happens to be really damn good and fun. Right. So when you have the dedication, you have folks like you who are behind it, who really, the, it's one thing to give it to a corporation, who might not know what to do with it and they'll just put out something that's overly complicated and people don't want but when you have people who love what they're doing and then you have people like christy and myself who are such fans it's hard not it's hard to keep away so when so for halloween 2 i know each well each of the stop the killer games has albeit the same mechanics there's a little bit there's, there's a slight variation on each game so for halloween 2 coming out um visa you could still order it on kickstarter if i'm correct right you, where our pledge manager is still open so it's the right. extension of the kickstarter <clears throat> and you can go there and correct get it. it's not going to be open and, much more long much longer so. so and it ships in december mm-hmm. but the difference talk about the differences like so yeah, it's well, two-sided so, right? yeah and, so, and silent night deadly night and my bloody valentine there's a there's a this the killer is moving in a very specific path around the board 
So for uh, Halloween 2, we give you three different paths and they are different levels. So level one is a little easier than level two and that's a little easier than level three. So we found out that in, you know every if you if you if you play the if you get the games and you play them in order you'll see how the games evolved just we add a little thing you know and so for ghostface you have up to 3 killers on the board which is so fun i mean every right. game is so different and it's not easy to kill one killer it's really difficult to kill 3 and you can become a killer in the game so if the four of us are right. playing it's like oh dimitri suddenly a killer and then you start to try and kill me and matt you know, and Christy. And so like those things are brand new. And so we thought that was right. a great way to end the series was like, you know, it's not just the same game now. It's now got these new attributes. And so, right. yeah. So I, that's what I've loved as a designer too, is like saying, oh, you know, we could do this, we could do that. And, you know, it's just, it's so, been fun. That's the thing is like, you have to love doing this, you you know? And the thing about Matt so is, you know, he doesn't just phone it in, you know, like this yeah. was, remember I was telling you, he, like, he'll call me and go, I've got a three season anthology. And they're like, well, that's the way Matt thinks. And everything connects to this and can, he doesn't. So that's what I think made it great. And it stopped the killer. We want to just show, not tell, but show our passion and right. care in these games. And we were hoping in the trailer resonated. I think, I think people really was like, wow, I didn't expect that to be right. so good, you know? So yeah. that was Oh, well, also to to speak about Anthony, I mean, you know, I think his journey in life has always been identifying something that he as a horror fan wants in his life. And then he creates that and we all get to benefit from it. I mean, that started out with his website 20 years ago, Myers Museum. He wanted a website about the Halloween franchise. He created one, you know, and I was on it every single day. Then he thought, hey, you know, why I would love there to be a Halloween specific horror convention. He organized the very first Halloween convention for the 25th anniversary with Trankus. You know, uh, he did Halloween 25 Years of Terror, pretty much the first, you know, standalone feature length documentary about these horror franchises we love. Now he's doing board games based on all these yeah. movies. Like, who, when did we ever think we would get a Halloween 2 board game? <laughs> right. Yeah, I told my no, father, it, my it, father, and he was like, "You did what? You know, like, you know, it's like you don't get it. if you don't get it, you don't get it." But like, there's a whole ocean of horror fans that are like, "Why didn't they do this back then?" You know, so we don't blame you if you don't get it. No. <laughs> my father was like, <laughs> <laughs> "So, so, Christy, you had um, so the other thing we um, oh, I can tell you." Forgive me, I digress. My bloody Valentine. So that weekend um, of the uh, Midsummer Screen Convention, I went to, um, there's a pizza joint in downtown Long Beach mm -hmm. called the Fourth Horseman. Have you ever been there? It's a horror-themed pizza place. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it's a horror-themed pizza place. I used to know the owners of, I mean, yeah. It was probably busy that night. <laughs> Uh, it was okay when 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 my friend Paul and I went, but what they had there was, and I hadn't seen it in forever, Moosehead beer. So wow. we each had Moosehead beer. So then we go to the convention, we meet you fine folk, My Bloody Valentine, the game uh, actually focuses a little bit on Moosehead beer, which inspired me to go to the brand new Total Wine that opened up down the street from me or in Culver City. And I looked for Moosehead beer and I found Moosehead beer. So the oh, next time I play my bloody Valentine. You had Moosehead beer. Yes, you yep, had, yep, you yep. Had the Moosehead so, uh the Moosehead koozies. I don't I saw the koozies, but we don't have them. Yeah, so, but, but, show you. It's like yes, who ordered the Moosehead? Oh, that's awesome. Right. <laughs> that's so great. So and I know that since we, we were talking games, you know, I, I told you Christy is like a great poor maven. And not too long ago, she threw out some trivia questions to me, and many of them, I scratched my head going, how the hell are you coming up with this? <laughs> so I was wondering, I thought it might be kind of fun for Christy to throw out some of these trivia questions to you. I only have one trivia questions because I'm lame, but she has like some, and I just thought it would be fun. I already know the answer, so I'm just going to shut up. Throw them out, and I'm telling you, yeah, Matt's an encyclopedia. 
So. He is. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's why. I figured, yeah. Yeah. I uh, I just kind of did it for fun. I'm kind of little context. Um, this month I decided for my horror website, which is wonderfully weird and horrifying.com to basically do 31 days of giveaways, which because I'm insane, I thought Love that that would be um, fun, which it has been. It's just been a lot. <laughs> um, and I've had a lot, cool. <laughs> a, a lot of different, a lot of different prizes and it's been, it's been really fun. Um, still going, but one of the things was, Oh, maybe I'll make some, like, I'll make my own trivia game and I'll print them on cards. And that'll be one of the random little gifts I give to people and just, you know, being Love a dork. Um, but yeah, I, you know, he had this idea, so hopefully this is fun. Um, but yeah, I'll throw some at you. I, I have a lot, so I'm not going to make you listen <laughs> to all of them. <laughs> um, but all right. So um, in the omen, uh, who or what is Damien's real mother? Oh, it's um, it's a horse, right? No, no. What is his real mother? Yeah, it, yeah. It's a, it's a what? Yeah, not a horse. It's not a goat. What is she? Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Okay. Told you. It's a jackal. There you go. Oh, okay. All right. I haven't read that novelization in 15 years. <laughs> <laughs> It was close. Uh, you know what? You're you just made me. I'm gonna watch all four home movies now this year. Well, yeah, because I love the home movies. It's been a, forever since I've seen them. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna watch it now. Thanks. That's for a great question. Yeah, that's that 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 stumped me too. <laughs> it's it's a it's a great yeah it's some great movies. Um, okay, and Donna, the great this Richard should be Donner. easier. Oh, yeah. Um, what movie in the '90s did Macaulay Culkin? play uh a the psychopath good kid <laughs> good son. i love the good son oh my thank God. you <laughs> good i'm glad I'm that you got Eli that in. elijah wood was in that <laughs> yes although, he yes was. <laughs> i got that although getting even with dad would have been a good title for a psycho <laughs> <laughs> i love creepy kid movie joshua was great the orphan movie oh my god the orphan Mikey. Movie. <laughs> yeah i love Learned. creepy kid movies Mike like, like the sequel to Blank Check, or it's the prequel to Blank Check because it's the yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I love Freddy that. Freddie and Jason were kids once too. <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> True. Speaking of Freddie, do we um do we know what Wes Craven based Freddie on? Like what real life character in his life? I do. Uh, There's two. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's right, I'll, I'll oh, say he, one. He, he, well, he, he was okay. a kid. He was looking out the window, right? And he saw right. this creepy man outside of his window yeah. look up at him. And uh, he says he could have sworn he heard him come in the house and walk up the steps, from my understanding. Uh, but it was based on this visual he had of this man with a hat. I don't think he had finger knives, but uh, he was as creepy as that. What's the other story, Matt? It's also. Uh, oh. oh. Go ahead. What? what, what? He's also named after a bully thank you yes <laughs> <laughs> Named after the bully. Good job. right i love that um we're both right <laughs> yes we are both right 100 percent. um okay all right so what object is moved in the movie misery that makes annie wilk suspicious oh. i know go I ahead know. Matt. let's see it's a ceramic <laughs> Penguin. Yay! <laughs> the little penguin faces north penguin. or whatever, south oh, right. or whatever. Oh. The harder <laughs> question would be what what direction Which, should what it direction does it face? That I would have oh. right. well, that was the bonus. Was and the what bonus. direction? <laughs> I'll say north. I don't know. I love New that. East. <laughs> east. Uh, no, I north love by that. northwest. Um <laughs> For some reason, that one gets people. I don't know why. I mean, me. maybe misery yeah. is just not as beloved as it should be. Right. Um, fantastic. Well, those are like those. Like, if you say, you know, what was the Michael Myers mask based on? I think those are more general. But when you start drilling right. down to like the ceramic penguin in in pen, in uh, misery, I misery. love that. I love that. You know, yeah, somebody you guys... always does the like. And you don't want it to be too easy either. You know, we, yeah. we just we did a podcast last night. So Stop the Killer has a YouTube channel and we did a giveaway. And we try to end each 
channel we've only episode we've only done two with a little giveaway and you know we're like well people who are watching we don't know the level of knowledge and so we're trying to be easy you know but so anyway and yeah, I appreciate that. Was, I love these questions. <laughs> his question was, oh, what was the Michael Myers mask before it was modified? And so right. like the first three people write William Shatner and, you know, uh, Nate was like, no, you got, what is it actually of? And then somebody goes, Captain Kirk, there you go. Right. Like, yeah. I'd be a little annoyed if I was one of those first three people. <laughs> right. right. I, I was like, well, it's a Don Post Captain Kirk mask sculpted in 1970s. But like, Christy, if we asked That's that great. question about the penguin, I think people would be like, what? You know? So I don't know. Whatever. But you're talking to two horror buffs but, here. But by all means, try it. So, okay. What else? Do, yeah. What else? What else you got? <laughs> Play it on us. Um. Yeah, I well, I'm also a big Stephen King fan, so it's like I'm from, Maine, from Maine. You have to be, and <laughs> from Maine. Oh, that's cool. I uh, just just love King. Um, so in Children of the Corn, um, oh. who <laughs> who does Which Isaac one? speak to? It, it's it's always the same. So right. he believe... who walks behind the rose. Yes, thank you. Thank uh, you. Not everybody I'll knows that. Good one. Yes. No, was that like response, Anthony? Because you don't like Children of the Corn, or you no? Because I haven't seen it. You know, like oh. it's <laughs> like for me, I don't have like Matt for some reason. I don't know how he does it. Remembers everything, and I just don't know how he does it. I have another friend like that. I'm like, how do you remember all that? So me, like, I have to go watch like all the Omen movies, and I'm like, okay, I remember like every little detail. But like at one point, I I would be able to tell you like what Leatherface because he has different names in the French, you know, in the in the movies. Uh, I could rattle them off, but now I'm like, now I have to think about it. It's like, hmm, you know, so I don't know. It just, there's so much content. I don't know how to remember it all. There's no but, secret. It's just, you know, the result of a misspent youth. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of random movie knowledge that I just have floating in my head. I don't know. It, it must take up so much space. Like it, it's, <laughs> it's like that right. music lyrics. It's just so random. It's like, um okay so what actress uh actually spent day three days in bloody or in soiled clothes to pull off the look of a gory scene you know i know three, day, three days in bloody clothes he's gonna be frustrated when he doesn't know this mm. <laughs> <laughs> well i know i like, can scream the like you know, like Matthew Lillard was covered in blood for days, but you said actress. Um, yeah, actually, but, like, like slept in them. I was and... gonna say, what actress slept in the blood makeup? Oh, I don't know this. Uh, time is running out. Sissy Spacek for Carrie. Yes. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Three I days. Purposely <laughs> wow. Doing three kings in a row, but that worked. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, oh my gosh. What other Stephen King ones you got? <laughs> Actually, I haven't asked us a Halloween know. question yet. I well, I, I saw an interview. It's hard to ask you guys. I how see, I I was thinking about it. I'm like, oh, there's just no way. Yeah, like I was, there's no. I but I, but I do have, but I do have one. I, I here's my one. In the movie Jaws, how many victims does Bruce the shark take? And I'll try to make it. I'll, I'll give one away. If you want to use Pippet the dog, you can There's add that into the or all together. Yeah, yeah, all together. <laughs> All together now. Am I allowed to count um, person? Of course. Sure. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Chrissy Watkins. Pip Pippet. Yep. Alex Kittner. Yep. Uh the stunt man in the rowboat. Right. Uh and uh I forget what what's what's Quint's first name? I remember Sam, right? I I'll just take Quint. Quint's yeah. fine. Everybody knows the Quint. Five? Right, but you're missing the roast. No, 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 not what the roast. The, the head in the boat. In the boat. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, ben Gardner. Yeah, good the call. Ben Gardner. Okay. All right, but the actual count is. Yeah. The actual count is seven. More than that. Yeah, I was gonna say there's seven. <clears throat> it's seven, and it's why, and it's very, it's 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 a crazy get because Ben Gardner, whose head pops out of the boat. He's he has a, a mate on his no. He has a mate on his boat. 
Oh. Like, so he's the guy that goes, wait till their mother, they're going to wish their mothers and their fathers when right. they start crashing up in the rock. So when you watch that scene, there's a guy on the back of his boat. Like he has a mate and it's like, well, he must have got it. Right. Maybe that's why Quint's dead. mate decided not to go. <laughs> mates, aren't, mates, aren't, mates aren't surviving this movie. <laughs> so, so yeah. So seven. There okay. you go. Christy, what else? Oh, like I said, Christy had a good bunch fine, of them. I, I, fine. I got a trick question for you. This is my famous trick question. Okay. How many times is Michael Myers shot in all of Halloween 2? The the movie. The movie, Halloween 2. How many times Versus is he shot? what? The real life well, situation? <laughs> tech, well, that's a good one because, you know, I, I shot him six times, but he actually shot him like he had an extra chamber of that gun that that gun doesn't have so i believe it was seven right, and the, the whole movie with, from the whole movie the oh whole oh movie. and the whole oh i thought it was, so the whole movie all right so but what do we go, are we going with the gaff or are we going with six times at the beginning from the opening credits to the end credits how many times is michael myers shot by a gun how many times is a gun you're talking about how many times you hear michael a gunshot myers. you hear a gunshot right <laughs> Because if you right, go, so there's you're on the right track, you're you're counting right. the air. That's the way that you trick people. Oh, right. <laughs> so it is, do you not? Oh, so there's the so there's the so there's the there's the the beginning of the film, mm-hmm. and then he gets shot when he crashes through the plate glass window in the hospital, and Loomis pumps. I want to say. He well, he empties another gun in him. So if you're going with the gaff, he, I mean, it's either twelve or thirteen. It's thirteen. Very good. There you go. So he shoots him seven times in the opening, which is an editing error, obviously. And then uh, it's only a six chamber gun, <laughs> right? Well, it's because because yeah. they reshot the right the ball, and they're like, oh hey, we need six shots, and that's like. You count? No, <laughs> no. Uh, and then Loomis shoots him five times when he comes into the hospital. Why does he shoot him five times? Because he fired a warning shot. Well, right? Shot. That's and, right. Uh, and then Laurie shoots him twice in the eyes. Right. So seven plus five plus three. Seven plus five. That's thir- fifteen. What? Seven plus five, five is twelve plus two. plus plus two. Seven plus five is twelve. So that's fourteen. <laughs> Oh yeah, sorry, it's fourteen. You you messed up your own. <laughs> I did. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Well, I think we. I should don't do remember. numbers. I do stories. I know. I'm, that's why I suck at math too. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Well, Christy, do you have any other questions for us, or do you have any questions? Yeah, non trivia or anything. Um. I'll ask one more trivia question. So what was the first horror movie to ever be nominated for Best Picture? The Exorcist. You are good. I was going to say that's (laughs) probably right. Yeah. You are good. Um, I I guess I'm wondering, you know, obviously this has grown in scope from what you originally imagined the games to be. As you, you know, stated, you've got these other, I already forgot what the little cube things were called. Um, the hex decks, <laughs> which, by the way, is, wait, can I tell a funny story about the hex decks? So you have a funny um, story about the hex decks. <laughs> yeah, just, just just wait. So when I was uh, so okay, so when I did the Kickstarter campaign for Ghostface, right? I had originally bought I had, I had bought one, um, and then I changed my my contribution because I wanted I I bought one as a gift. For, for for Christy, I wanted her to to play the game, and at that same time period, it was right at that time where you released as a bonus, you can get the the, the ghost face hex deck. Now I didn't know what the hex deck was, but I was like, oh, this is cool. And then you had the limited edition, the very limited edition candy corn hex the candy deck. corn variant. Yeah, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, you had the candy corn limited edition candy corn variant. I said, oh. It's limited edition. It's candy corn variant. That's really cool. So I got that for her too. And it was like literally not even 24 hours later when I forget we were talking about Halloween candy. And she goes, candy corn, yay or nay? 
I was like, well, for me, it's a yay. She goes, oh, it's a nay. I said, oh, shit. Yeah, it's, evil. it's an evil, evil creation. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm well. amazed at how many people don't like candy corn, including my, like, you can eat one, but like, you can't eat more than two or three, or you just hate them. I, you throw them. I, I grew well, candy corn is what made Rob Zombie's Michael Myers kill his family. Right. I, I, was, uh, <laughs> I assume. See? <laughs> so, and, and then I was like, "Well, then you might not like your hex deck. No, it's just no, a I color. I, I, I know, yeah. I know, but you know, you don't want it to trigger anybody. It's like, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not so like hateful of candy corn that I'll be triggered. I'll be okay. I'll survive. See, Tony, I Tony, I told you it was good not to put the the scent disc in there. Right, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't smell like candy corn. Right? That would be too far. Then you'd be going too far. By the way, for the ho- <laughs> this is a funny story. The Halloween two game, the Halloween two game. One of the stretch goals was going to be scent the scented box so you open it and it smells like pumpkin spice or something oh nice well it's better than dead bodies you know like so cool right like the ghost face mask smells like vanilla and all that so i thought oh let's make it smell you know let's let's make more sensory experience made it a hospital smell yeah oh or exactly (laughs) the, the factory sent me samples of pumpkin spice these discs mm-hmm I don't think anybody in China knows what pumpkin spice smells like because this did not <laughs> smell anything like pumpkin spice. It was like, what the hell does this smell like? So you, ha- you, ha- that- you have to let it marinate in the box for you yes. know, a few months. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but I smelled it and I was like, whoa, and I like, threw it. I was like, that is not pumpkin spice. <laughs> I threw it. <laughs> I, was like, wow, I think I still have it here. Matt, when you come over, I'll let you smell it. <laughs> I, I did. You're like, does oh, it smell like pumpkin nope. to you? And yeah, like, that's it was like, weird. we don't want people well, to go. Oh, we want people to go. Oh, that smells well, great. Well, it's folks, like- I actually just got uh, I actually just got the low battery on my thing on my Mac. Oh no. Oh wow! Uh, it's gonna cut me off. So, uh, I'm all right. Sorry. Well, this was but we're having a great. Time, no, we're having a great time. But yeah, yeah it's gonna cut me out. Christy can take over. Um, <laughs> um, she, she's fabulous, and she probably yeah. But uh, I'm just letting out. everybody nice know. See you. It was great. Yeah, but, yeah. No, I, I wanted to thank you. I wanted to thank you. I want to thank Christy. Congratulate Christy. She's been great. Uh, she inspired this conversation. And uh, she was so well, she was so into this and you folks are great to talk to. So fun. I wanted to say thank you very much. Just in case I cut out, uh, it's not your company. Um, well, but, just but in case, is- I only had the one last question, which we ended yeah. up tangenting a little bit, which is amazing. And I love to do. Um, but I was saying that you have these new ideas and things that are kind of coming off it. Do you see this as really going, like, do you have a lot of ideas for potential games like just like a yes. notebook full of ideas that are just that, yes we do and it's very difficult to to focus on one thing because the, the, the what i love about it is there this. is a lot to do and we get a suggestions from people i can and, fix this it's, you know no, <laughs> we get a lot of suggestions and we're like oh we didn't think about that and so another you know there's a challenge i mean we're basically it's the like halloween 2 is a license so you don't just go do a Halloween two game. You have to pay a license, and then you know. So it some of the things that we wanted to work on we couldn't because we couldn't get the license, um, or it was too expensive. You know, there was another Stop the Killer game I wanted to do, and we inquired to the studio, and what they wanted for the license was ridiculous. It was cost prohibitive. It was like, well, we could pay it and make the game, and but we know you know it's not going to be worth it. So yeah, we do. We have a ton, a ton of ideas. A ton of ideas. So I'm pretty sure I text you daily with, "Hey, you should do this. You should do this. You should do that." And I'm like, "I know, I know. We uh, we we have something with scent that we're working with that we thought would be really cool because we it was like, oh, maybe that would be cool. Just we want to come out with innovative things so that the basically the mission of the company is to create is to make you love your horror movies in different ways. So the novels, yeah. the board games. You know, you can play the board game while you're watching the movie. You know, right. and like another thing to do to, to experience the movie in another way the books same thing and so we're just that's kind of our mission for now is to just create really cool experiences for the movies that you already love um and we have some original things coming too you know um we, we doesn't everything doesn't have to be halloween so <laughs> you know, we want original things as well matt actually had a really good idea for one that we were going to explore so, nice. so yeah i love it 
That's cool. um, pretty much pretty much every conversation with Anthony at some point has me s- stating the words either you should you know what you should do or you know what we should do <laughs> no, be great. That seems like if there's something that seems very very difficult it's you know what you should do yeah. and then it something really, really fun you know That's what we should I tune do? out <laughs> you know what we should do we should do a commercial for Halloween too you know what we should do we should do a, lo- a drive-in event of Halloween one and two and call it the Lost River Drive-In. We did that. Yeah, and then yeah. he does it. You know? I totally get that. I I have ideas like a thousand a day. <laughs> and it's like, who has the time? But yet I just keep thinking more and more ideas yeah. and more things yeah, exactly. to do. Well, that's an asset. I have figured out I'd rather be like that than to be like, what do I do next? What do I do next? Because, and also in this business, you kind of have to have you know, and I'm not saying like uh, the business, the create, be a, being a creator or an artist or something, you have to have a million ideas because not all of them work. They're not all, you know, um, I have my site set on Black Christmas. I love the movie Black Christmas. And we really, you know, we have, a, we're designing something I think is really cool for, for that. And there's time to do it because it's for, it will be for next Christmas and something different and actually unnerving and scary, something you know, that like, you're like, wow, I can't believe they actually made, made this game filled with tension. What, you know, the thing about like the happy birthday to me, hex deck and everything, there is a sense of anxiety when you're playing the game because you're trying to complete this spread and these cards just keep showing up that are like making it more, you're putting the pressure on you and they do create a sense when in, in, in um, test playing it, the testers have said, you do feel that sense of anxiety. And I'm like, that's awesome. Yeah, you know, awesome. you want to play a game and, you know, use solitaire games with regular cards, you relax, you know, but our game gives you a little of that, like, oh God, I'm, they're closing in. And, you know, I love that. So, yeah. So we just want to create, we don't want to make anything bad. You know, we just want to make fun stuff. That's not too difficult. That's my, mo- that's my thing. I just don't want to spend it. <laughs> yeah exactly right it's like oh my god i'm sweating no i don't want that <laughs> no I, black christmas would be amazing i love black christmas i think that would be a really fun one to make into a game so i'm excited Absolutely. about that and you know mm-hmm. what? i'm a big like merchandise fan. i love horror merch just show me anything i don't care you know what i just love it and so i just want to create a little mini unicorn glass unicorn you know what i mean with the like you know that billy uses to kill mars <laughs> Like, I just want to make the game for that. I just want to go, you know, nobody's ever made it. Like, the entire reason. Made? Exactly. <laughs> like, if that's what's motivating me, I'll take it. I'll like, that's. Was, but, was um, there a Black Christmas novelization? There was, wasn't there? there I think that there was. Been. I, think there, been. I think there was. But like the fact that we did this little scalpel, you know, for, um, for Halloween. And I'm trying to like. Halloween, dude. I can see. That's I amazing. Think, yeah. yeah. You know, like that, like the fact, like this is a weapon. So this is a the lighter that Loomis uses. You know, for all right. it's a it weapon. Doesn't actually work, but <laughs> I know. But like, just to make that would be really cool. Yeah, like the <laughs> Mrs. Elrod that. knife. Like Michael doesn't use a butcher knife in the movie. He uses he steals yeah. Mrs. Elrod's knife when she's making the ham. You know, like yeah. <laughs> you know, it was like the fact that a little mini Mrs. Elrod knife exists. It's like that's that's why I made the game. That's it. I just wanted a little mini Elrod yeah. knife. That's all. I, that but speaks to me. I get it. <laughs> also, an Easter egg in the game. Yes. Uh, you have the board game with you? Yeah. I do. Oh, I do. let me just reach behind me. <laughs> yeah. oh, the one, the one oh, night I've got my bloody Valentine. So, what do you want to know? <laughs> if you open it up to, if you open up the board, the board. Oh, I know what you're getting at. Yeah. My favorite thing in it is, is this. that. Yeah, we actually get to see the moment that Michael stabs the knife. Oh, drawing. into the into cool. the desk at the high school. That's yeah. so cool. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, he does it, but you don't see him do it. You know, right. so it's like there's it a chance to kind of show him with precision. <laughs> you know, you want to give you want to give the fans something they haven't seen. Yeah, yeah. this I imagine this is just a really amazing opportunity to exercise your like. <laughs> just be able to nerd out on like a movie that you love or movies that you love so that's super cool oh, yeah. um yeah that's what it is and you know when you're uh, there's 14 characters in halloween too i mean you only can play four people so but like it's it was all important like the name a character in halloween too we most likely i don't think we have the teenagers that are looking for ben tramer but aside from them i okay. think 
pretty much everyone else is in there. Um, the cards are great. You know, you've got scenes from the movie and like, sure. um, it's like the actions, like the cards have actions on them. And so you, you the scenes complement the actions. Um, every game is different because of the ratio. The cards are, the actions are set at different ratios. So if you, if you're using the full deck of cards, every time you pull a card, like you don't just take the top card, you shuffle right. them, and take any card that alone gives you different results every time you play. So that some games you could be like, there's a lot of roadblocks on the board and some games there aren't any. And there are some games where, you know, Michael gets set back a lot and there are other games where he gets set forward. And so we just figured out a really fun way to, to play a slasher game that isn't complicated to learn, but is different every time you play. So that's, that's why I loved it when we designed it. So, and I told you what happened to me when I was playing my bloody Valentine, because like, I have like a little bit of a strategy which, you know, went, whereas you try to go behind the killer. Right. Because the killer can only really go forward, right? Unless, well, unless somebody, draws, <laughs> somebody draws a card and says, killer must take two steps back, which ended up in my space. And I didn't have a weapon. I was dead. You know, yeah. I got to tell you, I designed the freaking the game hell? that's happened to me all, has happened to me so many times. I'm like, why? Do, like, I'm fooling myself playing this freaking game. But I, like, I think when I played it at Midsummer Scream and I was the first person to lose out of all the games. <laughs> and I designed the game. So that's good. I love I mean, that that happened to you because now you're like, thank you. Str- everybody else is really energy. happy about it too. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, go get us more food. <laughs> so um yeah no the, the games are great uh this has been great yeah um so and, I, and i'm really glad to especially this whole new venture i wanted uh uh you know i wanted christy christy like you said has so many ideas and loves books and 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 games and and this has been this has been great i can't think of a better way to to kick something off because i think you know it's what you were saying I think when it comes to horror, I think the, the the fans to a horror convention are, I think, <clears throat> far better than when you go to a comic con. When you go to a when you go to a horror convention, it's just a different vibe. But the people there, I think, are much more approachable. Mm-hmm. Um, they're much. They're not. You know, many of them, with the exception of like if Jamie Lee Curtis showed up, or even John Carpenter has has his people around him. But a lot of the people, they're just at their booths. They're hanging out. You could talk to them. That's how I talked to Virginia Gardner. Mm -hmm. I mean, at at Starbucks, I mean, I had just literally had a conversation with her at her booth. You know, I picked up some art. She was there. There was nobody there. I just said, hey, just wanted to, you know, talked about um, Halloween a little bit and, and acting. And we had this really great super conversation. I felt really bad because I didn't get an autograph because I didn't have cash. Everybody was cash. Yeah, with the no. exception of like D. Wallace Stone, everybody's like cash. Uh, so when I saw her at Starbucks, I was like, you know what? I can't buy an autograph. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna buy her her her, her latte or her her, 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 her her tea. Um and uh, but she was just so nice. You you can't do that really at at comic-con and the people aren't i don't know like when you're it's just a different vibe yeah and i think horror fans are so passionate and that they'll win but they're also smart they won't necessarily like when they see a stop the killer like i said i had my friends play it and the first thing they did was they went on to the website i just ordered my halloween too oh nice boom (laughs) right so when you do something like that, I think it's really great. I also have a confession to make. You talked about the Trick or Treat Studios game that you got, <clears throat> um, and that's like a hidden movement game. Yeah, and I think we talked about it. Uh, I didn't tell you. Uh, I actually bought the game. I bought the game at at the Halloween convention, ah. but, but I didn't want to tell you. I was like, <laughs> I gotta get that game. I gotta like try fact it out. That, yeah, I, didn't I, want I bought to their Chucky you. game. I bought their Chucky game too. Yes. I want to see what they're I, doing. I, I, yeah, well, I, well I, I was I didn't want to tell you because I interviewed him and I love Stop the Killer and I don't want him to think. But now since you said you have it, I was like, okay, I have it. I've opened it up. Um, I think I 
basically have an idea as to how to play it, but it's it's a little more complicated than Stop the Killer. It's just not, it's one of those games where you literally have to have, it, it appears that you have to have the rules next to you. Yeah. Or, you know, and and those that thing game, number one, you need at least, at minimum, at least five people to play it. Yeah. At least. You know, that's, I, I love that, you know, like this other game that we're working on is going to be a little more involved. Um, it's re- you use like the cell phone on your, on your, uh, the light on your cell phone to shine mm. through and create colors on the board and all that. Okay. Stuff. It's a little more involved and, you know, but I, I want to make those kinds of games because there's a market sure. there and, yeah. you know, can't keep creating games that are you know like i want to cater to the people who want that kind of experience as well so so solo game the reason we did the hex decks was because some uh, we had people saying i love your games but i have nobody to play them with you know and it's like well let's create a solo game you know um and that's what we're doing and so you can buy five or six or seven of these hex decks that we're making so uh, i have five different ips right here on my desk and we have the licenses to all of them so it's just a matter of like rolling them out and they're small you stack them up and you know you can do a lot of gameplay um i I can see a great i can see a great commercial hmm. for this so you know (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, matt had a really good one oh i can't mention what the way it was but matt had a good one okay well if you ever need any early press let me know you know uh, oh, we will. Oh, I appreciate it. Yes, yes. We'll send you a sample, and you can like play it, and you can do a review or something. Hundred percent. Yeah, I'd love to. I am um, on my horror site. I I do books, comic books. I do all kinds of stuff. So oh, games. Oh, nice. Okay. I should send you an advanced copy of um, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and see what you think. I would love that. Yeah. Are you sure. a fan of the movie? Yes, I am. Yes. So. Okay, get yes. ready. I'm telling you, you're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> your head's going to explode i'm telling you right off the I'm, not okay. overselling it. I'm not even overselling it you're gonna be like what so anyway, I'll send you good I, that, that's a good thing okay. yeah. and nobody explode. wants like a boring tie-in you know like 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 yeah. i've read tie-in novels and they're fun the po- pocket book you, know, you take him at paperback when you read them you re- breeze through them that's fine but like you want i think nowadays people have this voracious ad, uh, appetite for behind the scenes and like rob zombie had a four or five hour making of his movie you know that's what people want is this immersive experience and so the novels just had to be like that armando took out twenty thousand words from the silent night deadly night book stuff i love but he's like it doesn't fit in the book like we can't right. make more <laughs> books so um, but yeah but I'll, when you have a copy i'll send you one i'll send you okay one. sounds Physical. good when um at, at um, the Halloween convention, I actually, I think it was, I think it's from Printed in Blood. They're coming oh, out yeah. with the animated Halloween novelization. I saw that, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I have an order of that, but, but you're right, and and who knows? Like, I'll, I'll after, I mean, you sold me on my Bloody Valentine <laughs> book for sure. Oh, you know, yeah. I'll, you know, I, I, I could see reading that with a with a nice moose head. Mm-hmm. <laughs> ah, this is ah, this is the life. <laughs> well, I, well, I've read, I've read my bloody Valentine, uh, you know, and I thought it was great, you know, and yeah. I mean, it was a film that I'd only seen a couple times, you know, it wasn't a film I was overly familiar with, and you know, what I can say about Armando's writing is that he's one of those people whose skill matches his passion for it, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and. It, it was so great like i'm really looking forward to silent night deadly night especially yeah, after sam here how great. much how much anthony's talked it up you know we're to doing me. a we're doing an event at dark dells for a oh, are you and halloween too for the game so okay right now it's on the same I'll night but they were trying to split it into two nights because of the two very different things and i'm trying to get talent there do you uh, know when it is do you have a date yet december 17th for okay the book okay what is it matt so that's news to me oh oh i'm sorry yeah that's for 17 and i I think i'm assuming i'm invited but uh, sunday it's a sunday and then before it's a week before is supposed to be the Halloween two game all right i will i will will try to i will try to be up there cool that that sounds great yeah absolutely so well my god 
This has been fantastic. Christy, did you have a good time? I did. Yeah, it was wonderful speaking with both of you. It's uh it's gotten me really excited to like, play some games. And... Hey. <laughs> no, really. I, well, yeah, thank but, you for having us on, you know, and thank you, you so know, much. It was, it was a privilege working with Matt on this trailer. Um, you know, when I, I was just on set, I, I was in the way. I always feel that way. Like, cause all my work is done before we get there. Right. I cover the permit and the insurance and all that stuff. But like, I just kind of feel like I have nothing to do and just watching it all happen. And Matt was in his element and, you know, we can't, I mean, he cast Lito Velasco, who is uh, the guy who played Michael in it. Like the, his casting was imperative and they worked together so closely. And so it just, so anyway, also glad you guys let... we also have to mention the music. <laughs> right. Oh yeah. The please do. Composed that. Oh, the score is an, uh, yeah, incredible. And, you, I mean, and uh, he's had, it's available to purchase on iTunes actually. Oh, uh, is it really? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll do it tonight. Well, yeah, I'm out in my backyard know. fire pit. I will do that tonight. I didn't have no idea. That. So yeah, what, do I, what do I have to uh, what do I going. have to look up? What do I have to I look just up? Look up his name. It's called um, I think it's called, it called? Room, room 1031, I think. But if you just look up his name, what's Lito his name? Velasco. Lito, Lito Velasco. Okay. All right. Um, it should and he's the ju- Okay. That's awesome. And yeah, yeah I'll do that tonight. He was the first person we cast because he's the greatest Michael cosplayer I've ever seen. So I always, I knew that, uh, you know, I had to cast him because, you know, first of all, being a cosplayer, his attention to detail on the costume is so specific, mm-hmm. you know, that I was like, okay, that's on, you know. We met me. with Lito three or four times about yeah, we did the test- mask and like we were, he's like glue Velcro here and put spacers. Here. Like it was like, what? And, but he knew exactly how to, make it look like the movie as much as possible i mean you know the the character of michael's also like lighting and shadow and all mm-hmm. that stuff but like you know the he was the 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 costume that dick warlock wears is like a little yeah. short you can see like kind of it's like it's like yeah, case he's... of blood <laughs> you know like he's got you know but like it yeah, just he was a little short to be a stormtrooper <laughs> for sure yeah. <laughs> but everything was everybody just tailored to every every little thing it was just you know, he cut, he cut, marred his hands with burns and, and right. all that stuff. it was just, we tried to just make it as good as possible. And, uh, he and was actually, in- um, if you go and stop the killer YouTube channel, there's a yep. 30 second teaser trailer yep. for the overall commercial and nobody's said anything yet, but there's two shots in the teaser that are not in the commercial because they're actually from our screen test. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that we put oh in nice. There. Yeah. All so right. well congrats well, on the 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 promo and congrats on the games. Thank well, you. Thank uh, you very much. It's been nice talking with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pleasure. And uh when 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 Christy comes out here, I'll have to get together. Love to go to the Magic Castle at some point. Oh yeah. One of my favorite things. <clears throat> and and um, you know, horror. It was so fun uh getting able to to hang with you folks at the Halloween 45th uh, convention and walk around. I, it was a really, it was, it was a fun convention. Uh, I had a good time that Saturday. It's tiring, picked up some great artwork and uh, yeah. So it's been, it's been a pleasure. It's, it's been, it, this is so fun. It, this was better than I could have envisioned it. And um, I'm so glad to have Christy on board with this uh, idea. So it was great. Cool. Thank you both. Just wanted and... to say, yeah. Well, thank you so much, you guys. <clears throat> thank you. Great wonderful... Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah, we'll. <laughs> yeah, happy and we'll. Uh, <laughs> happy Halloween, and when everything's good to go and gets posted, you'll be like the second to know. Yes. <laughs> so, awesome. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, this is all such right. a great conversation. All right. All right. Bye, all. Happy, so Halloween. Happy, Halloween. Yeah. happy Halloween. Thank you. Happy Halloween. Bye, all. Okay.